Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating this boiling liquid effect in Cinema 4D. So, it's almost Halloween, so I thought I'd better do a spooky theme tutorial this week. So we're going to go with the bubbling witch's cauldron. There's probably a million ways to do this, but I'll show you a technique that worked out pretty well for me. I do have a bit of a cold at the moment, so the old voice might be a bit funky, but let's see if we can get through this. Right, so here's our pre-made cauldron, and you can download this in the project file below. And if we hit Ctrl D on the keyboard, let's quickly run through our project settings. You can see I've already set our timeline to play back at 24 frames per second. And if we come up here to our render settings, just the usual stuff here, 24 frames a second as well, and 1920 by 1080 HD. I've also made our timeline a bit longer. We've got 200 frames here to play with. Right. Let's add some liquid to this pot. Now you could use bat wings or eye of newt, but I think we're just gonna go up here and grab a disc. All right, let's grab our move tool and bring him up here into place. You can also scale this by grabbing this little thingy here. And that's looking pretty good to me, but I wonder if the geometry of this disc is gonna be right for this job. Let's come up here to our display menu and turn the lines on so we can see this a bit better. We're going to be displacing this surface, so ideally we want nice even geometry here. But you can see the polygons on our disc all come in here to a point, or what's also called a pole. And that could potentially give us some issues down the line. So, new plan, let's delete that disc, and we'll come up here to this menu and grab a circle. If we zoom out a bit, you can see that circles come in facing the wrong way, but we can fix that easy. Let's just come down here and change the plane to XZ. And we'll move that roughly into place again. You can control the size of our circle with this radius control down here. Something like that should be fine. And if we zoom in, you can see the outline of our liquid. We just need to figure out a way to fill it in with geometry. So with our circle selected, we'll come up here and while holding the Alt key, we'll bring in an extrude. And that'll be automatically applied. But it looks kind of funny because it's been applied in the Z axis. But we can change that over here. Let's just bring it down to zero. And now we have the same shape as we did before with our disc, only this time, if we zoom in a bit, we don't have any edges in here at all. We actually want a nice even grid. So if we come down here and change our extrusion type from n-gons to quadrangles, we've got some lines in there now, but they're not looking very even. But we can fix that by going back down here and turning on the regular grid. And you can see now we've got some nice even quadrangles going across the surface here. And we can get even more of these quads in there if we bring this down to three. And that gives us plenty of geometry to start deforming. But first, I think our pot looks a little bit too full. So let's bring this down a little bit. About there looks good. And we'll make sure our liquid is touching the sides of our pot. We can just tweak that radius of our circle. Okay, that's done. Now we can start adding some bubbles. We could probably start by hiding our cauldron to make things a bit easier to see. And then we'll go up to simulate particles, and we'll bring in an emitter. And if we hit play, we can see our particles shooting off in the z-axis. But we actually want them pointing up, so they look like they're floating out of our liquid. So we'll grab our rotate tool and angle this up this way. And if we hit our middle mouse button, we can change views here. We'll go into the top view, so middle mouse button here, and we wanna make sure our emitter is within the shape of our cauldron. So we'll grab our scale tool, and just bring that into there. Then back to our perspective view, we just wanna grab our move tool and bring that up nice and close. We could even check it in our front view, maybe even closer. Something like that should be fine. Okay, back to our perspective view. Now we need to create some geometry for our bubbles. And the easiest way to do that is probably to just bring in a sphere. Now that is one big bubble. If we grab the radius here, we wanna bring that way down to something like 1.6. And now we want to tell our emitter to use this as the particles. So all we have to do is drag our sphere onto our emitter. And that'll become a child. And if we want to see this, we'll also have to turn on show objects. Now if we go over here and hit play, there's our bubbles. It's looking pretty cool, but in reality the bubbles probably wouldn't shoot directly up like that. We want to add a bit of variation. So what we'll do is we'll come up to simulate, particles, and we'll grab a turbulence. Now, if we hit play, nothing much has changed yet. That's because we need to tell our emitter to use our turbulence. So we'll grab our emitter and under the include tab, you can see it's currently set to exclude. So let's change that to include. 
and we'll grab our turbulence and drag that into here. And we'll hit play again. And believe it or not, that effect is actually working. It's just a little bit subtle at the moment. Let's go and tweak some of the settings. We'll start with the turbulence. These settings are probably fine for now, but we'll bring that frequency down to 12%. Let's go and check out our emitter. Under the particle tab, we could probably do with a few less bubbles. So we'll bring this down to five and we don't want to stop the emission. So we can make this the same as the scene length over here. We'll just put in 200. And I think if we bring the speed way down, we should be able to see the effect of our turbulence a bit better. Okay, that's looking a bit more bubbly. You can see them swirling around in our turbulence field now. Right, before we go any further, we're gonna tweak this setup so we've got a bit more control when we go to render this later. Let's pause this. We wanna use our particle emitter to drive a MoGraph object. That way we can bake this out when we're done with everything. So let's go to our MoGraph menu and bring in a cloner object. Then we can rename that guy to Bubbles. And so we don't get confused, let's rename our sphere to Bubble. And if we drag that into our cloner, and we'll just zoom out a bit, you can see it cloning our bubbles in the Y direction there. We need to grab our cloner and change the mode from linear to object. Then we'll need to tell it which object to use. We want the emitter, so let's grab that and drag it into here. And now if we hit play, we'll get the exact same effect, only now we can control things with MoGraph. So now we want our bubble clones that are being generated by our emitter to interact with our liquid surface here. And the way we're gonna do that is with a collision deformer. So you can find that under this menu and there it is over here. Let's bring that in and we'll rewind this. Then we need to drag our collision deformer to the bottom of our extrusion hierarchy right here. And if we have a look at our colliders tab, we need to tell it to collide with our bubbles so let's grab that and drag it into here. And now if we hit play, we can start seeing that effect. We're getting these little bumps whenever a bubble breaks through the surface here. I did a little bit of experimentation here and I found that changing the solver from intersect to inside gave me a better result. But have a play around and see what you can come up with. If we try that, you can see our bumps are coming inward instead of outward, which is all well and good, but the surface still doesn't look much like liquid. So to fix that, we're gonna bring in another deformer. This time we're gonna go with the jiggle deformer. And we'll drag that down here into our hierarchy after the collision deformer. And straight away, if we play that back, you can see we've got this nice jiggly delay now, which is starting to look a lot more like liquid. And we can see that better if we turn those lines off. And if you want this effect to be a bit more extreme, we can turn the strength of our jiggle deformer up to something like 200%. And that's looking pretty cool. So it's just a matter of playing around with these settings until you get something you like. If we take the stiffness up a bit here, it's gonna take a bit longer for the liquid to relax. We might also bring that drag down. And if we double the springiness under the advanced tab here, that's starting to look a little bit more like boiling to me. Okay, let's pause that. And we'll go back up here and turn our lines on again. You can see our geometry is a little bit sharp here. So now might be a good time to subdivide this. Let's grab our extrude and we'll come up here and bring in a subdivision surface. Remember to hold Alt so it's automatically applied. And that's made everything a lot smoother. We can switch those lines off again and zoom in and we'll hit play. I'm liking the look of that. We could probably even make this effect a little stronger. Let's pause that. And we'll go and take a look at our collision deformer. Under the advanced tab over here, we've got a few more options to play with. So we can make this effect a bit more extreme if we double the size here. Let's put in two centimeters and give that a play. And now it's bubbling a little bit more violently. Now, if you wanted even more distortion without adding any more bubbles, we could duplicate this system. So let's give that a go. We'll pause that and we'll grab our bubbles and our emitter and holding control, we'll drag that up here to duplicate. Then we could probably even have different size bubbles in this one. So we'll grab that bubble and we'll bring the radius up to something like three centimeters. Then we'll make sure our new bubbles is being driven by our new emitter. We'll drag that guy into the object slot here. Then we'll grab the emitter. We might bring the birth rate up, let's say 10. 
Then we'll grab our rotate tool and for a bit of variation, we'll just swing this around 180 degrees. Then back in our collision deformer, under the colliders tab, we'll bring our new bubbles in there as well. And so we don't get confused, let's rename this to bubbles large. Now we want these bubbles to displace our liquid surface here, but we don't want to see these giant bubbles. So what we have to do is hide them. And if we hit play, there you go. It's definitely starting to look like a witch's brew now. And just in case I lost you with those last steps, let me show you those effects individually. Let's pause that. If we grab our collision deformer and turn off our first smaller bubbles and hit play, you can see there's the effect of our new big bubbles. And if we turn those off and our small ones back on, that's the effect of our smaller bubbles. So we'll put them both on again and we'll also bring back our cauldron and that's pretty much our final effect. Before we wrap this up though, I'll run you through some of the steps you might want to take before you try to render this. As with a lot of MoGraph animation, you might want to cache everything before you hit render. So we'll start by caching our collision deformer. You can find that under the cache tab. We'll just hit calculate. It'll run through all the frames and we can move on to our jiggle deformer. It's exactly the same deal here. Cache tab and calculate. And finally, we can grab both of our bubble cloner effectors. Then we'll go to tags, MoGraph tags, and we'll grab the MoGraph cache. With them both selected like that, we'll just come down to bake under the build tab and hit yes here. It'll do the same thing. Now, if we hit play, it's all cached up and ready to go. And we can check that by scrolling through our timeline here. And you can see everything updates nice and quick. All right, and that brings us to the end of this tutorial. As usual, you can download the project file below and you can get a whole bunch of extra stuff on our Patreon page. And I also wanted to say a quick thank you to everyone who enrolled in our brand new online course. We now have over a hundred students, which is amazing. And if you wanna check that out for free on Skillshare, there's a link in the description. Have a great Halloween and I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you wanna see in the comment section below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.